Hi guys, welcome to my channel. I'm Liana from LianaVibes.com and today I want to talk to you about the monogamy polyamory spectrum. What is it and what you need to know about it? Before we begin, please be generous and smash the like button, show it some love as it helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. Now, let's get into the video. One, what is monogamy? What is polyamory? I'm sure you've heard of these terms before, and if not, here's the definitions of each. Monogamy is defined as the practice or state of being married or having a sexual relationship with only one partner. Traditionally, as relationship expert Esther Perel had said, monogamy used to mean one person for life. Now, monogamy means one person at a time. Polyamory, on the other hand, is defined as the practice of engaging multiple romantic and typically sexual relationships with the consent of all people involved. Polyamory is the umbrella term that has many subsets, such as swinging, polyfidelity, primary and secondary relationships, sexually monogamous polyamory, and open marriages. Both monogamy and polyamory are two sides of the same coin. It's how we personalize and navigate our internal emotions on how we love and who we love. Two, arguments for and against monogamy. Monogamy has historically been in place for most of history. While I won't go into the full details on the historic context of monogamy and marriage, it's important to know that the traditional definition and reason for monogamy has been displaced. In a majority of countries, we no longer marry for accumulation of land or assets, but usually for love. Furthermore, if we were to apply the historic context of monogamy and marriage, if you've already had multiple intimate and sexual partners, you already are, by definition, non-monogamous. Some arguments for monogamy include creating a sense of safety and security, investing your time, effort, and energy in only one person, having shared stories and memories with one person, possibly not exposing yourself to increased chance of sexual partners and thus reducing your chance of catching an STD, feeling chosen, it feels traditional and we're constantly modeled monogamy, it's familiar, and it's already difficult cultivating closeness with one person, introducing another person into the mix with their own unique values, needs, and wants may dilute an already established connection and much more. Some arguments against monogamy include, even in the most loving monogamous relationships, we'll find other people attractive. This is due to our curiosity of novelty. This is also the reason why pornography has its appeal and can lead to addiction. People feel they have the right and the autonomy to share their most intimate selves with other people as they see fit. It's not commonly found in animals, and monogamous relationships have their expectations, agreements, boundaries, compromises, fears, and hopes, similar to polyamorous relationships, but very different. Three, arguments for and against polyamory. If we were to model our behaviors to those of other animals, then we would find that very few animals practice monogamy. Some practice it only for a mating season and not their entire lifetime. Those of the polyamory experience argue that it's very difficult to find the one and that it's a very damaging mentality. The belief that you can only find one partner in this lifetime. With over 7 billion people in this world, polyamorous people desire to experience the variety and numbers out there. Polyamory speaks to everyone's innate desire to be curious of others, physically, mentally, and emotionally, and not setting limits on those attractions, releasing the expectations often found in monogamy. Technically, cheating does happen in polyamorous relationships, but instead of thinking what your partner might be doing, you already know. Some arguments against polyamory. Arguments and conflicts are handled in a very interesting matter. For example, if one part of the dynamic is having conflict and argument, it's very easy for both individuals to go to their other partners for solace, comfort, and support in order to get their mind off the argument or the person. 
Unlike their monogamous counterparts, who literally and figuratively seek their intimacy in one person. Polyamorous people never have to feel the aloneness and abandonment as monogamous people feel. There exists no safety net. Many couples who I have known who practice polyamory and have ended their polyamorous relationships often explain to me that there was a closeness between some dynamics than others. And when a relationship ends, it's very devastating for the person who leaves because as they leave, the partners left behind continue on without them. Also, the greatest caution against polyamory is the introduction of sexually transmitted diseases in a relationship. While polyamorous couples might be able to clearly communicate to their primary partner about their sexual exploits, it might not be so clear with their other non-primary partners. For example, in the transmission of HIV, this can be troublesome and devastating. Other diseases are known to lay dormant in the human body and still remain transmissible. We can't downplay the importance of sexual health, and that includes diseases that are very real and very deadly. It's impossible to keep 100% track of those who are having one night stands and what regular STD testing looks like in a polyamorous dynamic. Four, the monogamy polyamory spectrum. No one person is either or. Instead, a spectrum exists between monogamy and polyamory. People can exhibit monogamous traits in some values and polyamorous traits in others. Generally, we find ourselves more dominantly closer to one end of the spectrum than the other, but we aren't static. We can shift one way or the other depending on what chapter in our lives we are in. This is important in dating. Ask the question, where are you on the monogamy polyamory spectrum? You might find most people aren't even aware where they are on the spectrum, let alone if they really align with their own perceived values. What does it look like navigating the spectrum? Maybe a person might be more polyamorous because they don't consider chatting with others intimately as cheating, but they would definitely consider sexual intercourse with anyone besides their primary partner as cheating, which would be more monogamous. Perhaps the freedom to hang out alone with anyone, regardless of sex, is something they absolutely value, which would make them more polyamorous. But being emotionally intimate with anyone besides their primary partner would be considered cheating, which would make them emotionally more monogamous. The single most important factor in the monogamy polyamory spectrum is to find out where you are on the spectrum. There are no wrong or right answers here. Knowing where you are on it helps you find someone who's compatible with you because you exist in the same area on the spectrum and holding them accountable, putting the responsibility in their lap to know themselves deeply too. You might very much find most people struggle in this area. By knowing where you are on the spectrum, this will help you clearly know your own boundaries. Problems in relationships inevitably arise when you disengage from your boundaries and start allowing someone to cross them out of love. That isn't love. That's your lack of self-worth. Conclusion. People change and grow in their lifetime, but their values will usually stay the same unless a crucial event takes place that greatly shifts their paradigm of belief systems. For my viewers who are monogamous, don't open your relationship or marriage to polyamory unless that's something you truly desire with your partner and are fully ready for the expected and unexpected consequences of doing so. Once you open up those can of worms, there's no putting them back. For my viewers who are polyamorous, your relationships are just as valid as anyone else's. If you have found a dynamic that works great for you and your partners, that's something to celebrate. Your relationships are not somehow better than your monogamous counterparts. Again, they are simply different sides of the same coin. Also, we need to stop using the words ethically non-monogamous. Inferring that monogamy is somehow unethical is absolutely wrong. And it shows the insecurity of those who claim so. What can both ends of the spectrum learn and agree on? Relationships are all about communication. This isn't just about small talk. It's about having open, real, honest, vulnerable, intimate, raw, and sometimes uncomfortable conversations. 
Because the point of communication is to be seen and understood. It doesn't mean that we always agree. It's about allowing a person to feel like they don't have areas of themselves that they need to hide. Because that's love. Love beyond the boundaries of monogamy and polyamory. All right, you guys, that's all for today's video. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that's been helpful. Please like, subscribe, and share, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Stay well and vibe well.